this is my gear. When the alarm goes off, if I'm on the, uh, the load, I would come run down here and start my suit up. Uh, we train to be able to do this in two minutes. I'll talk my way through it and uh, do this one a lot slower. But I'll start with my shin and knee pads. These are just old hockey shin pads that I use. Some folks are using motocross style shin pads, uh, these ones, but it's just obviously to kind of protect yourself uh, from rocks or anything that might be in the jump spot that you might hit with your lower leg. And the next thing uh, is this Kevlar jump jacket. So this I've sewn in downhill skiing pads. So this is like what a ski racer would wear under their downhill suit. Um, just pock pads uh, that'll protect your spine and kind of like shoulders and elbows and your front. And then the outer material is Kevlar and this is all made uh, here in house. So we'll sew these jump jackets up and then sew these pock pads into the inside. And then the next layer is our jump pants. So the padding in my jump pants is, um, is a hockey girdle. A lot of folks are using the hockey girdle uh, for that padding. Um, I guess I should say other folks will use motocross pads rather than the downhill skiing pads in their jacket. Um, there's a, you know, a few different ways to kind of skin the cat on this, but as long as you're you know, well protected, uh, you, know, you can kind of, use whatever padding works for, works for you. Most folks are going with the hockey girdle in their pants. And then this is just a big, big pair of pants with some suspenders. And you'll put these stirrups on under your boots and that'll help you to be able to stand comfortably once you get your harness on. So we've got pockets in these pants also. Um, I keep, you know, jacket and some just camping type stuff in that for when you're out in the woods. We'll typically be spending, you know, anywhere from a couple nights to maybe 14. So, you know, what you have with you is what you get. This pocket has letdown tape in it. So in the event that I would land in a tree, you'd be able to rappel out of the tree with 150 feet of, uh, of let down tape using the repel system that's in our pants. So it's just a friction device using these two rings in this carabiner. Uh, super simple, but it works really well. Okay, and then the next step is my harness and parachute. So this is my, my harness with my main parachute on the back. And that'll go on kind of just like a backpack. So I'll back up to it like this, and then go chest strap first. And then I'll come forward, kind of shrug that up, and then your leg straps. And then the next item will be our reserve parachute and that'll go on our front. So this reserve parachute is our backup. So in case something were to go wrong with our main parachute, we've got this one. There's a couple different ways this one can be deployed. There's a spring-loaded drogue 
under here, if I were to pull this red handle, the spring-loaded drogue would pop out and that would catch air and pull the reserve parachute out. Um, like Josh was talking about earlier, if I had a problem with my main canopy, I would try to remedy the problem. And if, if whatever I'm doing doesn't fix it, I'd go to this handle and that would cut away my main canopy. And it would, this is that reserve static line that Josh was talking about. This would pull out, after I pulled this, this would pull 94 inches that's tucked up in here. It would pull, or it would release my main canopy, which would pull this out and I then go to pull this, but usually in, an, in the event that you're falling fast enough, yeah. this is gonna pull those pins before you even have a chance to do that. So that's gonna automatically pop it. And then the third way that it happens is we've got this little computer that in effect, um, there's a couple different, uh, this is called the AED. There's a couple different ways that this would fire uh, or there's a couple different companies that we use. And uh, anyway, this would automatically, if you were falling fast enough for long enough, this would uh, release your, your reserve parachute. Um, and so at this point, this is how I would go walk out to the plane. So I'd walk out to the plane with my helmet and gloves here, and then this is my personal gear bag. <clears throat> um, I'd get a buddy check from one of the other smoke jumpers, make sure that I put everything on correctly. And then when I go out of the plane, sorry, wherever works for you. When I go out of the plane, I'll have my helmet and gloves on obviously. And then this will be attached to me in front. Okay. So yeah, when we're going out of the plane, I don't, maybe Josh mentioned it, but this is usually about maybe up to 90 pounds of extra gear that you've got on you. Uh, and you're going out like this. So this stuff will be on here really tight. And then we're going out of the plane with all of this on. Um, this green handle is what I would pull to um, release my drogue parachute and get under my main canopy. And so when we go out, we do a five second count. I think Josh mentioned that. And we're going out and flying in kind of a cannonball. And then the count is jump thousand, look thousand, reach thousand, weight thousand, pull thousand. And on that pull thousand, I'm pulling this. That whole time I'm falling under my drogue canopy, it, which is just stabilizing me because with all this on, we can't go out like a skydiver and and go out and track like this. So what we'll do is have that drogue parachute that stabilizes us. And then that drogue will effectively, when I pull this, it'll pull the rest of my main canopy out. <clears throat>